What's going on everyone, I'm Boone. So today I'm taking a closer look at the Handycam plugin for Adobe After Effects. This is a tool that makes it really easy to work with 3D cameras inside of Adobe AE. I don't know about you, but in the past I've tried to do these depth of field tricks or just quickly throw a 3D camera into a comp and it's always more of a hassle and many times I end up giving up because sometimes there's just so many different attributes that you have to tweak to get the specific look that you want. It's kind of a headache. So that's why this tool is amazing. Now, if you wanna pick up your own copy, follow the link in the video description. So let's have a closer look. Okay, for this particular After Effects project, I have a simple 2D map animation. Now, I actually created this map animation using another cool plugin called GeoLayers 2. If you wanna check that out, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna have a link in the video description, so be sure to check that out. Now, for this particular project, it's made up of a couple of different shape elements, some text elements, then I have a trim path animation on this road trip path here. Now, I'm gonna use the Handycam plugin here to make this 3D, add some depth. So, let's see how we can do that. The first thing I need to do is create a new null object. So, I'm gonna go up to Layer, New, Null Object. And with that selected, then I'm gonna open up the Effects and Presets panel. And I've already got the Handycam plugin installed. I'm gonna go down here to Plugin Everything open that up, grab the Handycam plugin, drop it on the null object. And now you can see the Handycam effect is here. We got a bunch of different tools here, but it's not set up quite yet. So I actually need to click the setup button. And once we click that, now everything's set to go. And if you look down here in the timeline, we have a bunch of stuff going on. I'm gonna close this. You can see that it renamed our null object to Handycam controller. This is our control layer, and it's created a new camera layer. Okay, now with that controller layer selected, I'm gonna go up here to the Effect Controls panel, and right away you're gonna see at the top, we have a section called Orbit. Now this does exactly what it sounds like it does. It's gonna allow you to orbit around the various axes. Here we have X, it'll orbit around the Y, and it'll orbit on the Z. Now, it's orbiting around a specific target. You can see it's dead center right now, but it's orbiting around this null object. So I can actually change that. All I need to do is go and close the orbit section, and in the next section we have a look at area. This is where we can modify this target. Right here it says target. We have a drop down menu, and this allows us to specify any layer we want. So I can have it orbit around a particular marker. I can have it orbit around that path, uh, one of the country shape layers. So let's pick Switzerland. That's gonna put Switzerland right in the middle. Now if I go back up to orbit, you can see it's orbiting around that particular object. Very, very cool. So I'm gonna go back and select our null layer. Now if I'm still not happy with the position of the target, I can adjust the offset here. And here we have on the x-axis and the y-axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Right below that we have track. This is basically gonna bring our camera inward or outward toward uh, wherever it's facing. So if I go in here, you're gonna see goes in and out. That's definitely a helpful feature. Now with the position of the target set, I'm gonna adjust my camera. So I can do that with the position offset attributes here. We have X, Y, and Z. And you're gonna see as I move these, uh, they're moving relative to the position of the controller. So be aware that this is a very specific setup here and that the Z pa uh, attribute here, the Z attribute, works differently from the track. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me adjust the X and Y position offset. When I move the Z in here, you're gonna see it kind of spins around, so auto-orienting. If I undo that, if I just do the track, it's gonna move in and those layers are gonna be unaffected. A good way to see what's going on if you're getting confused is just switch to the top view and then zoom out a little and you, you're able to see that camera right there. And then you can move some of these around and you can kind of see exactly what it's doing. And it's cool, if I zoom in here, you can even see with the orbit, if I orbit that Z, you can see it's uh, kind of spinning around, pretty cool. Okay, next up is a really cool section, the lens section. This is where we can add some depth. So first, I actually wanna position uh, this particular camera so that, you know, if we could put it in 3D space, let's track it up. And I need to orbit this around, maybe right here, and track that in and offset it a little, you know, tweak it just like that maybe. Offset it a little more. Okay, now we have this in position. Now let's focus on the depth. So I'm gonna open up this depth of field section. Now this is really, really the simple part now, but before, prior to this plugin, trying to do this with all those camera options and attributes 
uh, was very, very hard. This is much, much easier. Okay, so I'm gonna move the playhead so we can see the line here animated on. Now I'm gonna enable the depth of field. The really cool thing about this is just as I did with the camera target, I can target the focus layer. If you look down here, it says focus layer. I can open this up and if I want it to focus on Switzerland, I can focus on Switzerland. Now you're gonna see there's a little bit of fall off here. Now that's where, this is where I can adjust it. So let's bring the aperture up. And as I bring that up, you're gonna to start to see the depth of field gets more and more shallow. Now you can see uh, the Czech Republic back here is almost completely blurred. So let's bring that up to 200. That's quite a bit. Now, I could bring the blur up a lot if I want, but I don't need to. This is pretty, I mean, you could take this pretty insane. What I want to do is I want to give it that rack focus. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to press the U key, and we're going to look at how this animates on. So right now we have this path animate on, and it animates back off. So let's say we want that focus to follow the path. So the first thing I'm going to do is when it's already focused on Switzerland now, so I can add a keyframe here. I'm going to take it to the end where the line animation ends, and I'm going to go ahead and click the focus offset uh, stopwatch here, so that's going to add a keyframe. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the U key so I can see that keyframe. And now I'm going to go back to where the line begins, and I'm going to move that focus offset to just over Prague. And I'm going to get it right to where it starts. And now we should have our animation. Now I'm just going to go ahead. Now I'm just going to go ahead and easy ease this and put some stank on it. There we go. Actually, I want to kind of try to match this other one. So let's take a look at this one. Okay. So now, if I scrub through here, you're going to see that we have an animation with a rack focus. Very, very cool. And now I can just simply copy these keyframes, paste them over here, and then time reverse them. Now we have a 3D animation with a rack focus effect. Now I also have a focal length section here, so I can change the focal length if we want to do some kind of zoom effect. And I have a dolly zoom check button here. This is, if I check this or enable it, it's going to keep all of our elements in the frame. So very, very cool. Okay, next section, wiggle. This is gonna allow us to quickly create a wiggle for a handheld feel. And it looks like we can even uh, have the focus wiggle as well. So if I just change the frequency to two and the amplitude to 10, that's gonna give us a nice little wiggle there. Can make it look like a, a handheld effect. Very, very, very cool. So a lot of versatility here. If you want to check it out, follow that link in the video description. And if you like the tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.